you can't continue passing on the same terrible mindsets and the same nonsensical nonsensical beliefs and 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 just terrible ideas that no longer serve us and, and really truthfully never served us right but seem to be passed down from generation to generation right we can't continue on these generational curses and expect ourselves to to be in a better position than the previous generation What up? It's Dramos, and this is the recap. Of course, as I do each and every week, breaking down some of the biggest headlines from this last week. Now, I know that is kind of an ironic statement because we've uh, we've had a few weeks off. I've been transitioning into a new studio space and just trying to enjoy the end of summer. But I am back, and man. A lot of BS has happened since I've been gone. So today's show, man, I am going to be tackling it solo because I got a lot to get off my chest of, of all these weeks of things that I've been seeing that just don't seem to to make sense. So I guess they, they do make sense if you consider the, the world and more specifically the country that we currently live in. So without further ado, man, let's just dive into some of the BS from these last few weeks. Now, listen, I have to start with the human cheese doodle that is Donald Trump. And and before, you know, you Trumpers get your panties in a bunch, have no fear. I am going to be taking on President Joe Biden as well. Uh, nobody is, is you know, uh, not going to get these bars today, right? Nobody is too good to get some of this criticism. But let's let's start first with, with the layup here that is our former cheese doodle in, in, in chief, in charge, per former president, Donald Trump, right? And these documents that he was hiding at his Mar-a-Lago estate, and I mentioned this on the last show that I did, but certain things have, have come up, you know, when it comes to what was actually found, right? Before we were sort of assuming what could be found here, what types of documents did the FBI, you know, make a, a, a search for? And what we've realized is that the FBI actually ended up recovering more than 300 classified documents from Mar-a-Lago, and that was over the course of this last year. And this is according to government court filings, right? And some of these seized documents actually detail top secret U.S. operations. And get this, these are operations that are so closely guarded that many senior national security officers are even kept in the dark about them, right? And one of the included details uh, in, in these documents was that of a foreign government's military defenses, including their nuclear capabilities. <sighs> so some really heavy stuff being held at Donnie's estate in Mar-a-Lago in the basement, you know, where, where people are just freely walking through, you can glance at all these boxes of, uh, of top secret documents that Donnie has at his disposal. Now, I've seen the backlash online, the Trumplicans are all saying, oh my goodness, the FBI, they're, they're overstepping here. You know, what type of world would we live in that, you know, the FBI can just come and raid the private residence of, of its citizens and specifically a former U.S. president, right? We should all be quivering right now, right? We should all be quivering if we decide to steal top secret documents. If not, this doesn't really apply to us. The FBI didn't show up there looking for for Donald Trump's donut collection, you know, or uh, or, or or trying to you know find out which porn star he's allegedly Venmoed for for uh, for sex these days, right? They didn't show up for for that nonsense. They showed up for stolen, top secret, classified documents. And again, if you are not in the business of stealing government documents, then you probably do not have to worry about the FBI raiding your home. I do not understand for the life of me why people are still fighting so hard to defend this man and to pretend like everything he does is okay when you would literally be calling for the hanging of someone else if they were put in his shoes. And I, I use old Hillary Clinton as an example, right? We wanted to arrest Hillary. You wanted people wanted to to hang her, to put her in jail over the alleged, you know, deletion of of, of top secret uh, emails and things of that nature. But yet, for the the same accusation, oh no, it's okay because it's Donald Trump, right? 
it literally makes no sense. And the only explanation I've been, been able to kind of come up with is that, sadly, these Trumplicans are, are really just participating in a modern day cult. And anything that this man says, uh, any lie they spews out of his mouth, they are more than happy to believe it and make more and more excuses for him. Now, I want to also touch on something else that is related to our buddy Donald Trump, right? And that is Steve Bannon. Now, for anybody not familiar, Steve Bannon is the founder of Breitbart. He's also a former Trump aide, and he now has been indicted on state charges of money laundering, conspiracy, and fraud related to the border wall effort. Yes, this uh, wall that Donald Trump promised to build that apparently was going to keep all the illegal immigrants from coming into this country, right? Now, Bannon is is accused of actually taking that money for himself. And get this, that program, that effort raised more than $25 million. When are you people going to open your eyes? <sighs> when are you people going to open your eyes and understand the level of deviance that we are dealing with here, right? Now, again, this isn't Donald Trump, right? He has his own other court cases to deal with, but this is someone that he decided to put in his inner circle when he became president of the United States, right? This is somebody that he has decided to get in bed with, and this guy is literally defrauding people who are donating money for Trump's little wall. And, and it's just ironic, again, there will be a million and one excuses for why this is okay or how Steve Bannon was acting on his own, whatever the case may be. And again, all of this is, is you know, uh, going to, to have to go in front of a court and we're going to have to see what the outcome is. And they're going to have to prove beyond a reasonable doubt that this man, in fact, committed fraud. But it's not looking good for, for Steve Bannon. And again, this is further proof of the type of people that former President Donald Trump thinks it's okay to to keep around him and and that to me is a, a vulgar display of of the type of character or lack of for the former president now listen i know a lot of people are going to claim that i'm biased right you know uh that i'm a progressive and a libtard and, and you know uh one of these zombie liberals whatever new fun thing that they're talking about these days and and as i've always stated I have no problem calling out nonsense when it comes to the Democrats, right? I don't think the Democrats are impervious to committing terrible acts, right? I mean, let's be honest, they, they haven't really done much for the everyday people unless there's, you know, some sort of uh, political pressure put on them or unless Biden wants to raise his, uh, you know, his approval ratings a few points, then he's motivated to actually do the work of the people. Now, once again, I will vote for Biden 10 times out of 10 over Donald Trump, but that does not mean that he is the candidate I wanted. Unfortunately, it was just Trump or this other guy and anybody but Trump, anybody but someone who is willing to defraud his own uh, voters, anybody that is willing to toss democracy in the garbage, right? Anybody except that human being. But on the topic of Joe Biden, let's discuss some of these shenanigans that our old buddy Joe has, has been partaking in or suggesting. Now, President Joe Biden is asking Congress to provide more than $47 billion in emergency funds that would go towards the war in Ukraine, the response to COVID-19, the ongoing monkeypox outbreak, and help for recent natural disasters in Kentucky. Now, let's get this straight. Money for COVID? I'm okay with it. Money for the ongoing monkeypox outbreak? I am okay with it. Money to help Kentucky, who has gone through a natural disaster. I am okay with it. But when it comes to sending more money to the Ukraine, that's when I have to draw my line in the sand, right? Now, the request that Biden is, is making would actually send $13.7 billion to the Ukraine. You know, this includes uh, funding for equipment, for intelligence support, and direct budgetary support. Now, listen, I understand there are terrible things happening in the Ukraine. And the idea that in 2022, a country can just go into another one and decide they want to take it over that day is a very scary thought. But with that in mind, we have plenty of scary things happening still right here in this country that require attention. 
While you're proposing to send $13 billion in relief to a foreign country, let's discuss what is happening in Jackson, Mississippi right now, right? As of last week, most of the city's 150,000 residents were without running water. And this has prompted the state's uh, governor, who's a Republican, Tate Reeves, to declare a state of emergency, right? And, and he warned that there wasn't enough water to fight fires or, or to reliably flush toilets and to meet other critical needs. Think about that. The people of Jackson, Mississippi are without water needed to fight fires and to flush their toilets. Yet, we somehow, some way, are okay with sending $13 billion, or we are proposing to send $13 billion to help a foreign country fight a war. Now, again, my heart is with everyone dealing with the atrocity of the war happening in Ukraine. But what does it mean when we are choosing to help others before we help ourselves, right? And and I don't mean that in a, a, a selfish way, but in the United States of America, the alleged greatest country ever built by, by man ever, ever seen, right? We shouldn't be living in a time where people are without clean drinking water, right? We saw what happened in Flint, Michigan, and unfortunately, Jackson, Mississippi is now becoming an extension of that. And, and just for statistics sake, I'm going to throw this out there, right? Jackson, Mississippi, the, the city is 80% black, right? And even before this, this shortage of water, the state's legislation has also failed to provide them with adequate funding for repairs to an already damaged system. <sighs> now, I hate to be the one to point out race, but it kind of seems like because this is a primarily black city that all of a sudden we are okay with with kind of forgetting about the repairs that have to happen and nobody seems to hear about anything until it becomes a disaster and that's a really really scary yet predictable thing to happen in this country so to me when i look at someone like biden making this proposal to send 13 billion dollars to the ukraine i think what about the 80 percent black city of Jackson, Mississippi. We could just forget about them because they are poor people of color. No, not in not in, in my world. And this is the type of thing that needs to be called out and we need to demand better from President Biden. And again, anybody can get criticism for the nonsensical things that they do. I don't care if it's Democrat or Republican. If you do something stupid, I plan on calling you out and I have an opinion on it. Now, we've talked about politics. We've gotten into the nonsense of the people in office. Now, let's let's just like, you know, kind of palate cleanse a little bit and let's get into some some entertainment news, right? Because man, we saw Bad Bunny El Conejo Malo making history once again as he became the first non-English language performer to win VMAs artist of the year award right that's mtv's video music awards that is a well-known award show highly credited right maybe some would say right behind the grammys you know as far as the prestige that goes into it and you have to celebrate a win like this because you look at someone like bad bunny again non-english language right he did not change who he was in order to find this level of success. He proved that you can be authentically yourself. You can be proud of where you come from, proud of your culture, and still reach the highest mountaintops. And that's what's so incredibly amazing about the story of Bad Bunny. And that's why we, we hold him with such high praise, at least I do here on this show and any other platform I get the chance to speak about it. Now, he also made headlines outside of winning awards. And this was actually some, some negative flack that he was getting, which is kind of rare for, for Bad Bunny. And sadly, was coming from his own community, right? Our, our fellow Latinos had some commentary when it came to Bad Bunny's performance, where he ended up kissing his male backup dancer, right? And, and he's been getting torn apart on the internet a bit over the last couple of weeks. And Latinos are, are, are criticizing him. And I've seen different memes and different posts online about, you know, oh, Puerto Ricans are taking an L on this one, right? We're taking a loss because Bad Bunny just kissed a dude on television. And, and people claiming, oh, now he's Dominican. The Dominicans can have him, right? We're tossing him to the side because he kissed another man. And it just really makes me so sad for our culture, for our community, that homophobia is still a topic of discussion in 2022. Like, get it through your heads. 
Who gives a damn what people do with their, their own sexuality? And who gives a damn about who they choose to love, who they choose to make out with, who they choose to have sex with? What does it have to do with any of us? Like, it's, it's incredibly uh, just deflating to see people coming after someone who has done so much for the culture and, and brought so much of our, our, you know, beautiful culture to light. And, and has been there for the people and been a, an amazing representation and beacon of hope for the people, yet you are willing to, to throw him away because of some nonsensical old generation idea that doesn't serve us anymore. And this is something that's incredibly frustrating to me about my fellow Latinos, right? Because I think we often get stuck in this old school mind of thinking, right? And listen, the past generations, you know, they did the best they could with what they had, but they, they have many ideas and, and many thought processes that they're passing down to us that just don't serve us, right? They are not a positive force for our community. And one of those things is this toxic uh, machismo culture as well as the homophobia that, that runs rampant, sadly, through our culture and our community. And listen, I'm not saying everybody is homophobic from our community, right? I'm not saying that, you know, uh, everybody is... is is in on this whole negativity, but it's still sad that the conversation is still loud enough that it reaches us and, and we have to sit here and, and react to it and, and have commentary about it in 2022 and that this is even a discussion. And I hope for our future generations that, you know, given the opportunity, we begin to correct these negative and toxic ideals and, and mindsets that have been passed down to us for generation to generation. They no longer serve us and they are only hindering our growth as a community and as a culture. So, man, everybody posting this nonsense about Bad Bunny and it's an L and this and that. No, stop it. This is a, a man who is pushing the conversation and is giving people the the cosign to feel comfortable in their own skin and that is such a beautiful beautiful thing and it's something that should be celebrated now the last thing i want to touch on when it comes to our culture there is an incredible program that's just been announced by bank of america right and when i talk about the idea of generational growth right correcting past ideas toxic behaviors things of that nature Another thing is also the idea of generational wealth, right? Many of us were not taught about how to, to build wealth in this country. We've been just taught this vicious cycle that continues over and over and over again, you know, a lack of education around finances and, and ownership and all these different things, right? And it is critical to us becoming a, a force in this country and, and having more of a voice. You know, we need to have ownership. We need to have a stake in the game. And I love this, this new program that was announced from Bank of America, right? And it's focused on buyers in the black and Latino communities. It's dedicated to filling some of the, the homes that we see that are, that are vacant out there or that are for sale with families from these communities, you know, especially those that are unable to put down a traditional payment along with closing costs because those things run in the tens of thousands of dollars, right? And that, that's what the barrier to entry oftentimes ends up being for people from our community as well as credit, right? Now, the Community Affordable Loan Solution, which was formally introduced on August 30th, is an initiative that offers a zero down payment, zero closing cost mortgage to first time buyers in marginalized communities. And the pilot program is being deployed in black and Latino markets in major cities across the country, including Charlotte, Los Angeles, Dallas, Detroit, and Miami. And this is according to a, a press release from Bank of America. And I'm thinking, one of the interesting things that I'm seeing them do as well that I think is really important is the way that they view people's credit worthiness when it comes to purchasing a home, right? They're saying that this new initiative operates through a special purpose credit program that determines eligibility through an analyzation of credit based in on-time rent payments, right? Utility bills, cell phone plans, and auto insurance without the need for mortgage insurance or a strong credit score, right? Now you think about how just incredible this is because again, many of us, myself included, we're not taught about the idea of credit and how important that is to your life. And for the longest time in my adult life, I had terrible credit that held me back from, from you know, graduating to that next phase of my life and, and, and adulthood. And programs like this are, are amazing because they're not looking at your traditional credit score. You know, if you're somebody who can prove that you've paid your rent on time, your cell phone, your car insurance, 
all of that will be utilized to help you elevate to the next level. And that is ownership, right? That is the only way we can truly get ahead in this country to progress our communities is to have a piece of the pie, to have a piece of ownership. When you look at most wealthy individuals, uh, they've been made through real estate investments, right? It shows you the power of owning a home in this country, owning some land, having ownership that you can pass down to the next generation and so on and so forth. You know, that is the, the key to, to generational wealth in this country. And it's incredible to see banks like uh, Bank of America creating programs like this targeted at our communities to help correct a, a problem that obviously has been holding us back from truly having a seat at the table in this country. So incredible, incredible stuff. Make sure you go do some research if um, you know one of those cities are, are mentioned for you and you're interested in this program. These are the types of things that we have to get behind and we have to take advantage of to, to elevate our communities and more specifically our families and create that generational wealth and that American dream that we've all been striving for. Now, with that said, I've given you the headlines. We've, we've talked about the good, the bad that's happening over these last few weeks. I've gotten to, to vent a little bit, get some stuff off of my chest. And of course, I always want to leave you, you know, with some, some positivity. And uh, we always do that in the form of a positive quote. Now, today's quote comes to us from Oprah Winfrey, and I, I love this because I think it, it pertains to so much of what we've been talking about on today's show. Now, she says, quote, we can't become what we need to be by remaining what we are, right? And, and I love this type of stuff because it's talking about growth. It's talking about inevitable change, human evolution, right? All of that that is necessary for us to, to truly become our best selves, to truly become what we are striving for, to become the person we, we've always hoped we could be, right? And I, I, I think touching on that, man, when I was talking about, you know, the, the Bad Bunny story and the homophobia that we've seen, the reactions that we've seen from our very own community, that's a part of it, right? You, you can't continue passing on the same terrible mindsets and the same nonsensical nonsensical beliefs and 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 just terrible ideas that no longer serve us and, and really truthfully never served us right but seem to be passed down from generation to generation right we can't continue on these generational curses and expect ourselves to to be in a better position than the previous generations right we have to break through some of these barriers these these old terrible ideas and and create a narrative for ourselves that that truly works in the the modern world and allows our community to elevate to the level that it needs to and and also so this speaks to the idea of what we've seen with that Bank of America story, right? The the idea of, of building wealth through real estate and those different things, right? And, and a big problem with this country traditionally has been the access or lack thereof of, of loans and an opportunity for people of color to actually get a piece of the pie. And in order for many of the racial dynamics that we see in this country to, to no longer have the power that they do, you know, our communities, marginalized communities, people of color are going to have to have ownership in this country. And programs like, like this one from Bank of America that they're trying out are a, a pathway to helping us get there. And that's what's so beautiful and just incredibly important. And we all need to take advantage of these opportunities as they come about. And again, the goal is always growth, right? We cannot keep spinning our wheels and, and just staying in the same place, expecting things to change for us, right? We have to adapt new ideas and push ourselves to, to grow and evolve past the human being that we currently are if we want better for ourselves and better for our, our community as a whole. Now, I'm going to get off my soapbox here. I know I threw a lot at y'all. It's great to be back out here doing the show, spreading the information. With that in mind, man, thank y'all so much for tuning in. I will catch y'all next week for a brand new episode. Until then, y'all stay safe, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.